on today's episode. Zaggy to the sky! Okay, so this pitiful site is not exactly a Vulcan, but it is a Delta Wing. Originally built oh, around the year 2000, uh, it has seen... Oh, that's my dog Luna. It's seen more impacts than the moon, probably. The sound of this thwacking into the ground when my kids were learning to fly it uh, will, will stay with me forever. And the strange naming of it, uh, Relapsus Resurgum, details its adventure as it went out into a harbour, crashed into the sea, I thought never to be seen again. But some kind person actually fetched it up on the, on the beach and put it there for me to find. So the intent is to get it flying again. Uh, obviously the Elevons have, uh, have parted company. This, by the way, uh, is an inverse for driving these electroluminescent strips, which were very effective. Oh my word, I've forgotten about that. It's an old multiplex 35 meg receiver. Originally, of course, it would have been powered by faithful Speed 400 motors. So what are we going to power it with? I think you know what's coming. How does that look? Let's try and slap on the EDF that I made with its, uh, with its thrust tube and see if it'll fly. We are going to need some new Elevons. Uh, this one is an uh, interesting boomerang shape, and this one is completely broken, almost completely broken through. So I've managed to find a piece of uh, chloroplast, remove the control horns from here, and then mark out a new Elevon. It appears that I put some Loctite or something on, on these many years ago. So, that's one down, one to go. As before, I'm going to make the Elevon hinge out of just the covering material type film, leave a, a small gap for the Elevon to flex. So I've already cut out this piece, let's get it attached. Here we have the top part of the hinge and I've just wrapped it over and trimmed that part off and then obviously we'll put another piece on, on the bottom. To start with I'm just going to tack the ends down and then check that we've got a, a suitable gap. Always a good idea to keep a couple of old sealed lead acid batteries hanging around. They're great for weighing things down whilst you work. Normal to use two settings on the on the iron. This is on the lower setting just to tack things in place and when you're happy then you can turn it up to the hotter setting. What I've done is to cut another piece and with the Elevon folded right over. What I'm going to do is to tack it along the trailing edge there and see if I can tack it to the other piece of covering film. Okay, so you can see that it's 20 years since I ever did this, uh, but uh, I think we have a workable hinge there. Now all we need is the other side. Making progress now. I've elected to connect the receiver directly to the SBUS decoder and that'll sit under there and we'll make some holes for the antennas to come out. Now this top plate is going to be sealed down so what I've done is to make up an extension cable for the the throttle and the obviously the power from the from the back so that once this is sealed in place uh, we can detached because I'm sure I'm going to have to play around with the C of G moving the, the thrust tube backwards and forwards 
on the subject of C of G, I was intending to use this battery, but I think a better choice will be this one. Real estate on the top plate here with this. Uh, it's going to be at a, at a premium. Just before we get all carried away and seal this down, it will be best to check our Elevon movement. Set up the transmitter already, so let's get that switched on. Now the elevators, if I move the stick down, they go up and conversely, so that's the right way. Going to the right, this Elevon should go up and that one should go down. And the reverse, so we have control. And I'm not going to throttle up because uh, things will get dusty very quickly. But in principle we're good to go, so let's get that top plate sealed down and move forward playing around with the C of G. The rebuild is complete. The battery is sitting on a Velcro strip as well as being held down with a Velcro strap, so belt and brace is there. The speed controller to add cooling is just stuck onto the top of the wing there. And I've checked the balance and it's around 18 inches in from the front and maybe just a, just a little bit forward. Uh, prefer to have it slightly um, forward on the centre of gravity than, than rear that can cause problems, especially having not flown for an age. So I guess now it's just a time for waiting, uh, waiting for a calm in the, in the breeze, and we'll go and fly it. One of the challenges of living in a desert is that there's very little in the way of grass. Normally for a test flight I would prefer to have somewhere with a little bit more grass, but this is as good as it gets around here. Thankfully at least the, the wind has dropped to pretty much almost nothing. It's time to go. So what went wrong? Or what went right? Not very much. In terms of wrongness, trying to launch on my own, uh, hand throwing it, only having one hand on the on the transmitter, uh, that was causing uh, an issue. And clearly what is needed is a, a mix on a, on a switch so that when I throttle up, it'll have some up Elevon to go into the climb. So with this switch here, you see that when it's engaged, it has, has raised the Elevons up. Once it's on its climb and I can put my hand back on the transmitter I can switch that off and, and control it normally. That's one of the answers to the hand throwing problem. But the more bizarre problem was it turning sharply to the left all the time and even though I got as much right hand stick in as I could, I couldn't bring it back again. Now obviously before the flight I had checked the directions and the throws of the elevons and that all appears to be great. What I had forgotten, of course, was Newton's third law, which states that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. In this case, the action is that we're spinning this fan and it's rotating in this direction here. The reactive force of that is to turn the plane uh, in, to the left. So I need to find a solution to that. Now with the receiver powered by this little battery here, I can show you what I've done. What's needed, I feel, is that as you throttle up, it puts the craft into a, a bank in the opposite direction and the two effects should cancel themselves out. So on another switch here, I've put a mix onto the throttle. So you should be able to see that as the throttle goes up, this elevon goes down and this elevon comes up which will cause it to turn as it, as it would to the right. And I've only put in, I think, about 20% on that mix. With those two modifications in place, I wonder if it's made any difference to us. As in as much as it managed to take off and I turned it around in a circle, landed again without reducing it to its component parts, I guess that's a successful flight. However, what it does point out is that my flying skills 
are in desperate need of, of honing, shall we say. Secondly, I think it explains why there aren't very many EDF-powered zaggies, because uh, the thing flies like a dog. As with everything, though, there is a silver lining. That is that I have learned more about the Tyrannus and OpenTX uh, mixing capabilities, so I'm much more comfortable with that now. Perhaps I'll revert the model back to a, a pusher brushless configuration. One day, Zaggy to the Skies will become a reality.